Montana in the 80s. The cattleman was king. His herds grazed 100,000 square miles of pasture. There was so much room that fertile rangeland was going to waste. But not for long. Shepherds and their sheep sought the lush green pastures of the north. Lousy sheep. I don't see how folks hereabouts got talked into letting them come this far. We can always send them back. How can we? They've got the law on their side. Your father wouldn't have let this territory get spoiled by a fool law written back in Washington. Well, I'm all ready for a fight, but we're going to need a good man to lead us. Why? The ranchers would rally around you the same as they would of your father. Well, if it takes a range war to drive out the sheep, let's get it over with. That's no way to talk. You'll have my help. Thanks. Mr. Buckley's advice. And because some sheepmen burned the line shack of Circle J to the ground. Well, don't worry, Miss Woodstock. We'll make them sorry they did. Get off my desk and get out of here. Yes, Miss Woodstock. I gave you that idea. We're just out having a little fun. You know, in case you fellas don't recognize him, this is Jack Mahoney. He's got a price of $2,500 on his head. Hey, why don't you do me a favor and light out, huh? There's a sheriff in these hills with a posse, and I wouldn't like him to cut me out of any of that reward money. Enough out of you. Sure you're not hurt, Donnie? Me old tough Indian. Maybe not too tough. Maybe too old. When it comes to playing rough, we can show these hombres some tricks. the sheriff now.
ain't too old, Mr. Wyler. Me let men chase away your sheep. Never mind my sheep, Johnny. You come up here and take it easy. Look out! There. Good boy. There you are. It isn't all bad news, Mr. Wilder. Durango's shown up. Durango? That's the best thing I've heard in months. The sheriff's hot on my trail. You better get going, son. I'll spread the word about Durango all over the county. Good. Lucky that all the worries we've all had never turned out half so frightful, never turned out half bad. Now, Mr. Daniel faced that lion, and that lion ain't been fed. But Daniel never worried, for this is what he said. Well, it's got to get better before it gets worse. So the whole blame kapoodle's in a mess. Yeah. You got to have a little sun before the clouds and the rain. Grit your teeth and just hope for the best. Well, think of Jonah and the whale when your troubles begin. Mr. Jonah couldn't pay the rent, so the whale took him in. Well, it's got to get better, yeah, before it gets worse. Oh, the whole blame kapoodle's in a mess. Same singer, same song. It's got to get better before it gets worse. Oh, the whole blame kapoodle's in a mess. You hear me? You've got to have a little sun before the clouds and the rain. Grit your teeth and hope for the best. Old Rover's on the trestle. Woo! Rabbit on the rail. Round the bend of freight train. Woo! <laughs> Thereby hangs a tail. It's got to get better before it gets worse. Oh, the whole blame kapoodle's in a mess. I mean, it's ruined. The whole blame kapoodle's in a mess. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, friends, if you'll step right this way, I would like to interest every one of you in the thrill of a lifetime. The scenic tour in this custom-built cab. The only cab of its kind this side of the Hudson River. How about you, mister? Look, you happen to know this party? Rob Woodstock, Timber Rock, Montana. That I do. Step right in here, sir, and I'll take you right there. Step uh, right in. No trip is too long in this fancy cab. Now sit right back and make yourself comfortable. Now, if I could interest you in the scenic tour, this geographic extravaganza... Just start... take me the shortest way, will you? Uh, the shortest way. Dad, believe it, nobody wants to go on the scenic tour. I'd like to see it myself. Ain't a live one on this whole burg. Bunch of gunsels. <laughs> uh, sir? I think you're making a big mistake. Now, I can take us right out here about a mile and a half and turn to the left. There's caves, there's a mountain. Look, windbag, pick up those reins and let's go. Windbag, no less. <laughs> Ring eye, mush. Well, that's it. That'll be six bits. Six bits for... All right, Chubby. You better water your horse. It's a long way back. Ring eye, we eat. Get out. Well, I find Rob Woodstock. See the man over there. What do you want to see Rob Woodstock about? I've got a letter to give to him. If it's about a job, I'll take that letter. You Woodstock? <laughs> Wait here.
Doctor. Your explanation better be good. Excellent. Excellent. Mr. Steve Brent is a rough, tough fighter. I'll talk to him now, Carl. Get the men out of here. I'll be over the sheriff's, Rob, if you want me. Rob? Are you Rob Woodstock? That's right. According to this letter, you're considered pretty tough back where you come from. I'll put you on with some of my boys and see how you turn out. If you show up well, I'll give you more money and maybe a promotion. Just a minute. That fight a minute ago, was that your idea? I have to be sure of the men I hire. You want the job, don't you? No, no, I don't. Somehow I got the notion I'd be working for a man. Man or woman, Brent. I'm used to giving orders and having them obey. Then you give your orders to somebody else, miss. No wonder the sheep men are making monkeys out of you ranchers. Better watch your tongue, mister. I'm warning you. When a woman tries to act tough, she isn't my idea of a boss. You're not only a female, you can't hold your temper. You're probably treacherous, too. So I'm not taking any chances of being shot in the back when I walk out that door. Good day, miss. I think it's sort of hard. We'd have nothing but trouble. Steve Brent is too cocksure. When it comes to discouraging sheep men, maybe it pays to be cocksure. He's the type gunman you've been looking for, Roberta. Don't call me Roberta. <laughs> all right, Rob. We're going to need all the help we can get now that Durango's shown up. Rob, I... I wouldn't hire Steve Brent if there were 50 Durangos. Warning. Leave the sheepman alone or take the consequences. Sign the Durango Kid. See you tonight. You know who. Looks like Smiley's still playing game. Are you gonna take a chance and see him? I guess I better. It might be important. Yep. The way I figured, you'll never have a better chance to catch Mahoney. He'll be calling on Smiley tonight, and all you've got to do is have some men on hand to nail him when he shows up. I'd sure feel a lot better with him out of the way. Yeah, all of us. I'll have Lars and the boys watching Burnett's shack tonight. Hi, Jack. Oh, no. Look, I don't want to buy nothing. I ain't got no money. I ain't even home yet. I want to wait. Evening, Smiley. 
Oh, for Pete's sake. Thought maybe you might give me a little information, Smiley. Look, I ain't got any information. You've come to the wrong place. I don't know from nothing, and I know it's a little of that. It ain't important. Expecting someone? No. Always set two places for yourself, eh? Uh, well, yeah. Sometimes I'm twice as hungry as other times. Smiley, what do you know about Jack Mahoney? Uh, Jack Mahoney? Who? I, I never heard of him. I thought maybe you might be able to tell me where he hangs out. I'd like to pick up that reward money. What's the matter? You got a chill? I, I, I got double high battery, and it's contagious. You might get something from me. You better get out of here. Well, I'm sorry you can't tell me anything about this outlaw, Smiley. But maybe you can tell me why three of Buckley's men are outside watching this place. Look, I ain't got no information. Nobody ever tells me nothing. I, I'm just... What did you say? They're hiding in the brush. Keeping a sharp lookout on this place for some reason or other. Well, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, goodbye. Come back sometime when I'm home, when I'm here, will you? Three men, Buckley. Jack about due. I'll get my way for what I'll do. Fine town I got into. Respectable businessman. Nobody wants to ride in my wagon. Get a scenic tour for anybody. Hide outside of my house. Try to shoot me. It's gonna be a war here, I'll tell you that. My patience is tried. Get the ventilating department ready here. Blow them full of so many holes. Look like a walking flute. And one for the first one, two for the next one. See, where's that? Stop. Use anything. Now. Fucker up here. All 30 of you. Come on in. But you snuck up on me, huh? Just come in through that door and we'll carry you out. Jack! Oh, <laughs> Smiley, what's up? Say, you're lucky you made it. Do you know there's a whole swarm of Buckley's men surrounding this cabin? I was just going out to get them. That won't be necessary. Durango. Luckily, three men won't bother us for a while. We'll take care of them later, Jack. Jack, you've met? Well, we didn't have time for that. You see, Durango got me out of a scrape earlier today. Certainly hope you're going to stick around. We can sure use your help. No, I've noticed. Smiley, take care of this little fellow. We had lost his mother. Well, she ain't here. Dad, blame it. I had some news for you, too, but I wouldn't tell you now if you used to get down on bended knee and ask me. Bet you were going to tell me that Durango had shown up. How'd you know? Just guessed. And there's some more, too. There's a high binder called Steve Brent that's affixing to bring in your corpse and collect a reward, he thinks. Steve Brent, huh? Yes, sir, and he just about done it, too. Uh, come on, Chief, I'll fix you some grub. <coughs> Jack, there's something I'd like to get straight. And the time is short. Fire away. Just why is there a reward up for you? Well, it's only been a year, but it seems more like a hundred. Before this crazy sheep and cattle war got started, I was engaged to marry a girl I thought the world of. I remember I was bringing her home from a square dance at Winslow's barn. <coughs> well, my mind's made up. As long as I'm going to marry his daughter, your father's going to have to learn to see things my way. <laughs> You'll never get him to change his mind about sheep. Then I'll change my mind and raise cattle. Oh. I said goodnight to Roberta and headed back on foot for the association office where her dad, Jim Woodstock, was working late. There were certain serious matters that had to be settled before morning. It had so happened that I had been chosen by the sheepmen to represent their rights in the territory. And everyone knew that Jim Woodstock was the one man who blocked me. I was trying to figure a way to bring up the subject with that honorary old rancher when...
Gun's been fired. Sure it has. I fired at the killer. Carl, where were you when you heard the shot? Coming up the street outside that window. See anyone come out of that window? Well, after the first shot, I saw Jack run to the window, open it, and fire a shot at nothing at all. That's a lie. Don't look good, Jack. Everybody in town knows you had plenty of reason to want Jim Woodstock out of the way. You believe that? Sure, I do. <laughs> Buckley was covering up for the real murder, and I never could figure out what his game was. It was right after that that he was elected head of the Cattlemen's Association. And then the sheep and cattle war really got underway. Well, this Roberta, how does she stand now? Well, she's really changed. Now she's hiring gunmen to... Well, you can't blame it on the girl, Jack. After all, she's lost more cattle than any of the rest of the ranchers, and she lost her dad. She got a broken heart thinking you killed him. Here. You figure that out for yourself. It was right after that that she started packing a gun and calling herself Rob instead of Roberta. That's enough, Smiley. Say, aren't you fellas hungry? I'm just starved. Look, I cooked that bird just specially for you, Jack. Well, thanks. Wrap it up. I'll take it out to the boys. They're getting sick and tired of eating that swamp rabbit. You know, a bunch of the sheepmen that have been put out of business have joined up with me. We're just standing by, waiting your orders, Durango. Well, tell them not to make any more moves against the cattlemen until you hear from me. Give me a hand with these three buckley men. All right. All right, up you go, boy. There's a full-size manhunt on for Durango and Jack Mahoney. And if you're hiding Jack here, I intend to collect that reward. What makes you think I'd do anything to help him? Well, folks around here seem to think you're still in love with him. Get out! Get out! Now, wait a minute. Maybe I can be wrong, but everybody knows he's still in love with you. So why shouldn't he try and see you? Who's everybody? Anyway, it's not true. Now, get out of my house this instant! All right, all right. Let's 
200 head of sheep were burned to death on that west range. Cattlemen? Definitely. And this is it. Hold it, you men. But I was rival. Not this time, Durango. You heard what I said? Do as I say. But those sheep that were burned... I know all about those sheep. Whoever set fire to that rangeland expects us to retaliate. That's just what we're not gonna do. Now look. Who is it? Me, Paul. Spade just sneaked into town with word that sheep men ain't gonna fight back. Why not? It's Durango again. He's talked him out of it. Carl, if anything happens to this sheep and cattle war, we'll be out of our deal with the syndicate to keep the price of meat up. Nothing's gonna happen to it. Yeah, I know. But if the fighting was to stop, we'd be stuck with someone to blame for getting rid of all those herds. I told you nothing's gonna happen to the range war. If the sheep men are too lily-livered to fight, the cattle men won't be. Not when I get through with them. so fast those cattle never had a chance. Oh, anybody that'd do a thing like that isn't human. I'd kill them like I'd kill a snake. That must be the sheriff with Steve Brent. Hi. The sheriff was just telling me about the cattle burning. I'm sorry. But I didn't think Jack Mahoney would ever go that far. It wasn't Jack. He wouldn't do a thing like that. No, then who was it? It was Durango. I saw him setting the fires. I took a shot at him, but he got away. Oh, so? I want you to kill Durango. I'll pay you any price you say. Now, we'll talk about price later. But I can promise you one thing. If Durango and I ever do meet face to face, only one of us will walk away. Good enough, Brent. Now, I'll not only get Durango, but I'll have that reward money for Mahoney in my pocket within 24 hours. I'm doing the best I can. I can't find a bite to eat and I'm starved. <coughs> Nobody ever brings me anything to eat. I'm gonna have to go to work. <coughs> I'm not finding anything, shut up! <coughs> ah, some cheese. Much too good for a mouse. <laughs> mm. oh, you poor little lamb, I couldn't eat this. Here, you take it. Here, here you are. Uncle Smiley wouldn't dare eat that with you hungry. Lamb, mint jelly. the thought. Smiley, you cannibal. I'm hungry. Why don't you feed me? I'm starving. Give me, give me a bite. Yeah. Lamb. So sweet. So tender. 
and eat the little lamb? Oh, yes, I would. Nightmare. I dream sheeps could talk. Oh, oh. oh, there you are. Nice little fella. You scared me. <laughs> Go to sleep. Molly. Way to town, looking all around, roping everything I see with my daydream, Larry. Yeah. Little loop to start, that's the easy part, makes a catch a cinch for me with my daydream, Larry. Yeah. Having lots of fun, little doggies run, never miss a throw. I try. I'll catch him, you can bear. For I'm a wild, I'm a woolly cowboy with a daydream, Larry. Yeah. Imagining a cow running by me now, make a loop and down he goes with a daydream, Larry. Pretty girl, give my rope a twirl, what a lucky loop I'd throw with my daydream, Larry, yeah. With the rope a twirl, nothing in the world that I couldn't hog tie right, for I'm a cowman, I'm a cowman, you can bet. I'm just a wild, I'm a woolly, I'm a cowboy with a daydream, Larry, yeah. Now, my friends, the next tour is about to start. How about you, Mr. Two-Gun? You be the first one. Hop right in. Hey, you. Yeah. We think you're a sheep man. You think I'm a sheep? Why, listen, have you ever heard me say hello? Moo. That's the closest I've ever been to mutton. Well, I, I'm its mother, see? I, I mean, oh, it, wait, I, I, it hasn't got a mother. I, I'll be back in a minute. I, come on. Johnny. Steve Brent didn't waste any time. Johnny Bigfoot was shot down in cold blood. Tim, get my horse. No, wait. This is a job for all of us, Jack. Not this time. Steve Brent is my own personal business. But you can't just ride into town after him. Then I'll get him outside of town. He'll have to pass Lookout Rock within the next couple of days. So you stay away till you get word that Steve Brent is dead.
why the door is closed, but I'm going in. Well, I don't think you ought to just now, Roberta. Maybe later. Why not now? Well, it's just that we're talking about something that might not be too pleasant for, uh, well, for a lady to hear. Is that right? Well, you just said the wrong thing, Sheriff. Move aside. I couldn't keep her out. Why should you? Sit down. Jack doesn't mean anything to her anymore. Jack? Oh, Spade here has been pretending he's a sheep man, spying for Buckley. He's got information that means I can catch up with Mahoney at Lookout Rock. I'm glad to hear it. Gonna try and take him by yourself? Sure, why not? Sorry, Brent, but we're all gonna have a hand in this. What's the matter? You think that sheep hurt us too much for me? Too many of you might scare him off. Why don't you let Brent go after him alone? And give him a 50-50 chance of getting away? Is that what you're thinking, Rob? Is not. Why should I help that murderer? And just in case you have any doubts, I'll add another 500 to the reward money. Good day, Tim. up there. Let Mahoney see you, but don't get too close. It's my guess he'll start out after you. Lead him here and we'll finish him off. Good is done. Something's gone wrong. I think even an outlaw deserves a fair chance. You were riding into a trap. Now get out of here fast. Things have
Doesn't love him, Bullet. Mmm, <laughs> not much. Jack get away? Yeah, he got away. Red let him get too close. Unbuckle your gun belt, miss. You too, Buckley. Left hand. Easy. You won't be needing that. What do you want? I want to know the name of the Eastern Syndicate that's paying you to kill off Montana cattle. You're crazy. Nobody's paying me anything. I'll give you five seconds, Buckley, to start opening that safe. One, two, three, four. You're wasting your time. There isn't even any money in here. Go ahead, open that safe, Buckley. What's the matter? You afraid Miss Woodstock's gonna find out about you? Open it up, I tell you. Here's the money, Durango. Never mind the money. I'm interested in having a look at that record book. Hand it over. I know a United States Marshal who found this very interesting reading. Now in the back room, both of you. information in that ledger to hang all of us. We know that Durango and Jack both go to Smiley Burnett's place. Get hold of Burnett and see what you can sweat out of him. All right, Mr. Buckley. That gives the rest of us a chance to destroy that big herd in Smoky Canyon. You crazy? There's thousands of cattle in that herd. It's either get rid of that herd or no payoff for us. All right, let's get started. saved my life. And you don't think that I killed your father? Oh, no. When it first happened, I did. I was blind and foolish. Darling, we've all been confused. Oh, and another thing. It wasn't Durango or the sheepmen that burned your cattle. It was Buckley. And Durango was telling the truth? To you? Yes. He made Buckley open his safe and give him his record book. He said it would prove that Buckley was being paid to keep Montana cattle from ever reaching an eastern market. Rob, that explains everything. Can't you see why they started the sheep and cattle war? They murdered your father because he found out what they were up to. I've been so wrong about everything. That's all in the past now. When Durango gets that record book to the proper authorities, every... Buckley just rode out of town with the sheriff and some other men. You don't think he'd still try to do anything? He might as a last resort. Where's the big herd? In Smoky Canyon. It's a mixed brand herd. All the stock has been run together. We figured it would be safer. I'd better get out there. Wait! I'm going with you. Go to the rain shack and get that blasting powder. Joe and Ace can plant it where I told you. What will the signal be? Three shots. You come back here and tell me when you're ready. Come on, boys. 
You liver lip brush pile, you double crosser, you killer in sheep's clothing. If I hadn't trusted a woolly chaser like you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. Is that so? Take that. Ow! 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 Now talk. I'm not talking. See, you can kill me. You can torture me to death. I'm not telling you nothing. Is that so? Where's Durango? <laughs> if I'm scared, I'm a sheep's uncle. Get out of this, nephew. What are you going to do? Here. There, leave him alone. Listen, don't you touch my little lamb now. Look, you murdering black-hearted baby killer. Don't you touch him. I'm going to count to three. And if you haven't told me where to find Durango, I'm going to slit his throat. One. Two. What's the matter? Can't you count more than three, you stupid cluck? Why don't you count 50,000 by fives or 100,000 by tens? Ah, shut up. One. Don't do two. that now. Don't do that. You gonna talk? Uh, no, and I can break strings and ropes and strings and... Take it easy now, Stiley. I'm gonna kill you. Yes. I'm gonna cut your throat, see? I'm gonna, gonna cut your liver out. I'll cut your arm off and hit you over the head with Put it. Put that knife down. I'm gonna cut you in so many pieces, the flies will carry you off piece at a time. Put that knife down. I'm gonna let you have it right now. I'm gonna put it right down your throat. <laughs> No, Spotted, 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 no,
the shipment have agreed unanimously, Jack. They want you for sheriff. Thank you. Looks wonderful on you. Yeah, ain't that pretty? Now that Spade's confessed everything and told us all how Buckley killed Jim Woodstock and Buckley's dead and all the high binders and outlaws is rounded up, ain't nothing for you to do around here. There's plenty for me to do. Namely, to get that no-good outlaw, Steve Brent. Steve Brent? I'll get him. It takes the rest of my life. Oh, ma'am. Excuse us a minute. You think you can keep Jack from going after Steve Brent? I'd sure make a poor wife if I couldn't. But why should I? Jack is sheriff now, and Steve Brent is a scoundrel. I promise. Jack will be a good husband and stay home. A lot of happiness to both of you. Durango. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah!